Okay. Welcome, everyone. Today is um, January 18th, um, 2018, uh, and we are going to be talking about um, editing on the AIC Wiki, uh, and today we're going to be focusing on content um, for the Emerging Conservators Professional CCN. Um, did I get the, <laughs> did I mangle the, um, your name or we're good. So, um, so what I hope we will accomplish today, um, is that I will sort of walk you through using this, uh, screen share, um, sort of how our, what our wiki site is is doing and then we're going to really focus in on you know your pages and what you guys will probably be doing not only in in this month but sort of you know moving forward um, and with the goals that that you should be able to to um, edit uh, independently and um, keep uh, advancing the, the content that's relevant for your uh, network so um, what you're seeing up here on the, the screen is, is the main page for our conservation wiki, www.conservation-wiki.com. And um, there's a, a bunch of sort of architecture, but before we get into that, I just want to sort of give a little bit of a background about our, our wiki site and in, in some ways in which um, it's different from other, other wikis that you may have, have come across. So um, we've had our wiki site for a, almost, I'd say, eight or nine um, years now. And when the site was launched, the primary content that was on it were the, um, various, the various specialty groups that had these printed conservation catalogs. So um, the um, textile specialty group and the paintings group and you know, a few of the uh, specialty groups um, had that content and it was all uh, scanned and um, translated and, and put up online. And so, um, to, and since then, a number of other specialty groups have um, added content directly, you know, sort of digital born. And then um, since then, the, the, the site has also taken off with um, other specialty group uh, networks and committees. So there's a lot going on on our wiki, which has created um, some issues that we will sort of be trying to address as, as we go. Um, but what it also means is that once you have creator access, creator is sort of um, what we call the editing level access on the wiki, you have access to um, edit on the full site. Um, and that's important to recognize that you know you're unlike a, a, a let's say a website where sometimes you can have permission to edit like one area of content but not um, monkey around with others. Here on the wiki, you know, once you have editing access, you can you know go in and, and change any page. Um, and we've sort of developed a bit of an etiquette that um, that for specialty group content or other content areas that if you're not involved with that group um, that oversees that content, that you wouldn't go in and, and edit a page beyond, let's say, maybe um, adding a category or correcting a typo or updating a link or something like that without discussing sort of who's in charge of that you know, content page or area. Um, so I'm not saying don't ever touch any page that's not like an ECPN page, but just be aware that, you know, if you're going to do something sort of more substantial other than sort of linking and, and reworking that, like you can't just go in and um, to, let's say, a, a book and paper page and, you know, start doing stuff without being in touch with them. Um, for your own ECPN things, you know, you guys are, are all, you know, working together on that and so you know go go bonkers um, the other um, thing that that is a sort of legacy of this uh, born <laughs> uh, book content is that we're still trying to figure out better ways to link across 
the, our specialty group silos, and that's where I think some of the things that you guys are doing is actually great because you'll, you know, be able to pull things potentially from from other from other uh, pages that are already exist on on the wiki, and and we'll discuss a little bit later how that might be possible. Um, so, just to be aware of, you know, a few general things um, on our main page, which sort of introduces the project. Uh, we have this um, check out what's new, which as you can see has um, still stuff that's no longer very new, but um, this is one area of the main page that, you know, as you guys do new stuff, I'd encourage you to add it here so that, you know, people can get a good um, glance at it. Um, and I would ask that, that not to edit in, in these sort of um, boxes without speaking to me because that, um, is sort of like the, the bigger architecture picture and, and it may be fine, but um, as Rebecca has you know seen, there, there are some other issues that we would just wanna be aware of. Um, there are, as we come back, um, you know, I feel that editing on the wiki is uh, a little bit like any other sort of like pigment identification or you know, hair and fiber ID that if you don't do it for a while, you have to sort of, you know, you come back to the microscope and you say, wait, you know, what, what's that again? So just so you know that if, um, I hope after this that you'll, you know, have some time over the next, you know, few weeks or months to, to come back and sort of practice um, these skills. But um, if you take a break and then you come back to it, um, this sort of getting started and some of these things in the cheat sheets are here for you because, you know, I find myself that, um, that you get a little rusty. Um, so um, just to know that that is there and the other place to check out for um, for helpful content is in our, I think it's under our current events page um, and which we have a bunch of like wiki tips that have been things that um, we've added over um, various uh, wiki training sessions and, and edit upon. So um, that's another to go. So going back, um, a, a wiki is a website and um, the difference is that um, wikis are particularly good for sort of collaborative editing um, and sort of crowdsourcing that kind of work um, as opposed to, you know, another, let's say, um, like the WordPress sites that we um, use in AIC that, you know, some of you are familiar with the back end of those. Um, you have uh, a little bit, you know, more control over certain aspects, but um, but it's they, you know, they have other pluses and minuses. Um, so the wiki has been great one because we can give people sort of broad access. And there's you know sort of a low um, barrier to entry for this. We want as many IC members to be participating at whatever level they're comfortable, whether it's contributing content or actually putting it up online. Um, and there's really great tools for sort of tracking how content changes and develops you know, over time that we'll, we'll discuss. Um, so, you know, pretty much everyone is familiar with Wikipedia. Uh, it, the AIC Wiki uses the Media Wiki platform. Um, so once you know how to um, edit on our Wiki, you would be able to use those skills to edit on um, Wikipedia and on other wikis. There are some differences though, depending on you know sort of what plugins and versions and everything. So, um, so it is, there's a, if you're having trouble doing something or want to sort of figure out how to do something fancy that you know we may not have time to cover today, um, you can use, and it's down here in the, um, uh, getting started some of the, the media wiki facts um, but just be aware that sometimes not every cool thing from um, media wiki will work on our wiki um, and you know the same is true true for others so if you put in a bit of code and it doesn't do exactly what you want um, you know that that may be the the issue that you're seeing um, so I think that's mostly what I wanted to say about the um, sort of the introduction of the site. So in preparation for this call, um, oh, did we just, did we lose someone or did we gain someone? 
Everyone's still with me? Oh, okay. Um, I think we're good. So in preparation for this call, um, uh, we had a bit of a discussion about uh, where your content would sit and what you guys want to be doing. Um, and so one of the changes that we made uh, was um, was renaming this section, which is sort of like the, the quickest entry into um, where your content sits. So instead of, it was previously was called education and training, and now it's gonna be education and professional development. We'll use that education and training page for um, some uh, more specific content that you guys are gonna be um, doing down the road. But let's back up now and talk about what happens when you come to the site. Uh, after this training, I'll be um, setting up uh, a um, login for you and, um, and a, a password will be automatically generated and sent to you via the, the wiki site. So you'll get an email um, from, from the server saying you know, that, that you've been um, set up as a, a creator. So when you come to the site for the first time, you'll see that you, know, you can see the site, you can see these page discussion, you can even see the, the history of a page, um, but you won't be able to actually edit or anything until you log in. So um, let's do that. Actually, I'm going to keep this. We're going to keep this as a blank one, and I'm going to log out here on this page and log in. Very often, when I'm working on the wiki, I'll have two browsers, two separate browsers open, because um, sometimes then you can <laughs> see what you're doing and you can sort of toggle back and forth. So again, let's pretend we've just come to the AIC Wiki page and now we're gonna log in. So one thing to keep in mind that um, your username is case sensitive, which is not true of, of most things, your username is not. Uh, and the protocol for um, most of, um, you know, for most usernames, mine is a bit anomalous, is gonna be first initial, last name, so it, a, a more um, common login would be R Aronstein with the A lowercase. Um, for people who are using like maiden names or um, Wiley, I think um, you may be using you know, a middle name. I, uh, if if you have it something different than you know your email address and your full name, you know let me know that so I can set up a, a username that will work for you with our our general protocol. So now let's see if I actually remember my own login. Hmm. That would be an interesting wrinkle. Aha, great. Okay, so now I'm in. So um, once you're in, logged in, obviously you'll see your username up here. And I'm just gonna, take you, if you click on your username, um, what you see is it brings you to your user page. Uh, and um, so your page is gonna be blank when you do this for, for the first time. Um, so you know it'll say um, like user uh, R Gridley and um, you're gonna have just a, a, a blank screen. And what I'd like to encourage you to do is to put a little bit of information in the page one because the goal of us having our usernames be our name uh, is so that people can actually sort of figure out who was adding content um, and you know then they can look at a page down the road and say ah Rachel made that edit she has no idea what she's talking about when it comes to this topic so <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna overrule her um, but you know the, the idea is to again we're we're not using sort of anonymous handles on our, our um, platforms that you know we, we want people to you know see who's who's creating that content and give them credit and you know be able to have a discussion. So um, so I'd encourage you you know you can practice like I you know this was a way to practice you know putting in a document putting in the little logo all that you know kind of stuff. Um, the other thing that's great about this is if you're hesitant to like sort of go um, gangbusters on a 
CPN page, you can do your coding, work on stuff here in your user page, um, and then cut and paste it into a different page, you know, down the road. Um, so you, you can use your user page as a bit of a sandbox. Just don't forget that it's there, you know, down, um, down, down the road. Um, once you put something into a page and you hit save, uh, just be aware that it is online. And so if someone searches on the wiki, they will find it. Um, but the reality is like our, our wiki is used. It's, you know, um, information is, is uh, findable through Google, but you know, if, if the wiki is a work in progress, so, um, whether you feel comfortable doing it on a real page or in, in your sort of user page as a sandbox is, is up to you. But um, you know, I wouldn't feel uh, intimidated by the fact that it's live content. Um, and you know, I'm just sort of throwing out these options. So one thing that uh, once we're in the user page, you'll start to see also is that um, different pages, what you're seeing up here is your page title and um, there are different kinds of pages. So this is a, a user page. Um, when we go back to um, our main page, you'll see we don't have that user colon prefix. We have um, you know, just a, a page title. And this is gonna be important because this information here is what you would use to create links within the wiki or to figure out sort of what, um, where you are. So, um, so we're gonna next go through um, some of some of these uh, things here in um, this level of menu. So on this page, uh, we are in what's called the the page. This is what um, we expect people are coming for. They're looking for. This is you know the actual content of that page. So let's go into the education and professional development page just for um, a better example off the, the main page. So we have, um, this is our page. And um, unlike in the other page, what we're seeing now is this next link is red. So um, this is an automatic function of, you know, of all wikis is that uh, when there's content in a page, it's blue. And um, when you don't have content in a page, it's red. So if I click on this discussion, um, this is what a, a blank page would look like. And so here you'll, you'll see it's um, creating um, talk colon. The talk colon is the prefix for these discussion pages. Uh, and then this is the, the page title. So once I put in a little bit of information here and I hit save, this creating is gonna go away and we'll be left with the, the talk colon. So that's the way you distinguish between um, a, uh, a page that um, you know, is the, the primary content and sort of the discussion that may have uh, happened in the background about you know, why that content is the, the way it is. So um, let's, I'm just gonna put in some information here just so you guys can see what, what's happening. Uh, that I don't know how to spell accommodate. Um, okay, so um, I've now just added uh, a little bit of content here. And um, so there's a, a few things to uh, take note of. You have a bu button up here that says publish and a button down here that says um, save page and show preview, show changes. The save page and publish are essentially the same thing. Um, and they may give you slightly different um, sort, of, sort of updates on once you hit them. But once you do this, you're gonna see this creating is going to, to go away and that content is essentially live and available. So um, 
here, this is just like a, the standard disclaimer. Um, and it brings up this extra button, which is the same as what you're seeing down here on summary. Um, and we like when people, you don't have to do this for every time you hit save, um, but if you, if you can, um, there are some advantages for, for it. So you'll see. Um, Okay, so once I did that and I saved, so now this link turned um, from red to blue because now there is content in here and we're out of the editing um, window. So again, the idea behind this is that, um, that this is your content, but the wiki is meant to be collaborative. So this discussion page is sort of um, tracking how, um, how that, that content got there. So, I'll um, just jump to a different window and sort of show you um, some ways in which um, that's used. So here on the objects page, objects didn't have a printed conservation catalog. Uh, their content is all born digital. And so the first um, object wiki group that got together had, you know, a sort of email discussion about, um, you know, what their, their outline and goals should be. And that uh, information got captured here um, in this. So the, the pages function, you edit them and work on them in exactly the same way, but um, what you're putting on them is, is different. So this is sort of the content that speaks about. So as you're seeing here, this is sort of like the, the, the ongoing discussion about like, you know, what that template would, would be. So is everybody clear on sort of the difference between uh, a page and a discussion page? Yeah? Yeah, that seems clear. Okay, great. So let's um, move on. So the next that we hit to, which is, you know, the crux of what we're doing is our edit page. So um, let's go into, we're gonna go into our resources for emerging conservators. Um, I think that um, this page already is, you know, is really great. And the fact that you're going to be doing this work now is, is already because you have so much good content here. What um, I understand um, you guys want to be doing is, is breaking it up so that it's not quite so overwhelming um, and so much, you know, sort of on one page. So one of the things that we um, I talked about with, you know, Rebecca, earlier was um, the issue of, you know, trying to find a balance between having content be focused on a particular topic versus also not making people, you know, click too many times. So, <laughs> you know, finding a balance between scrolling and, and clicking. Um, so that will just be something for you guys to keep in mind as you break up these, you know, pages and, and keep working. So, um, so what you've got here is, is um, a great sort of portal to finding um, your content um, in other places. And, um, and again, one thing I want to emphasize is that you guys don't have to, as an editor, reinvent the wheel. If you want to sort of see how um, to do something or you don't remember how to do something, you can go to a page that has sort of like the same elements of what you want to do and look like that and use that to figure out what the code is. Because here we're going to pop into our editing mode, and you know before when you were in, we were in that editing the discussion page. You were seeing it was just a clear blank screen, and now you're seeing sort of the you know the morass um, behind it. Um, so this is where it um, it becomes like a little hard on on the eyes, um, but uh, it it shouldn't don't don't let it become intimidating. So again. Um, we're, if it says here, you know, either editing or creating, you know, you know, you're going to have this window and you can um, make changes. And um, what you're starting to see here is the beginning of um, different, you know, the, the different kinds of code. And so what I want to get down to is um, creating one of the um, new page names that we want to set up. So let's 
go. Um, so this is where having our second window is um, sometimes useful. Uh, and I'm going to jump back to your resources page. So one of so we're going to have a new getting started in your career page, um, which is going to allow us to break out um, this content. And let's just check that we have the correct new heading. So okay, that is that's remaining the same. Okay, so this is going to show how we're going to create a, a new page. Oops, Everyone with me? Everybody seeing the editing resources for Emerging Conservators page? Yep. Okay, good. So in our editing mode, you're, you see this um, getting started in your career, which actually right now is, um, is a header. And we're going to come back to why I know that in a second. But there are two kinds of links um, on the wiki. One is an internal link to other pages within the wiki, and the other is an external link. Um, so if you're going in and you know editing a page that already exists, uh, then um, you could be doing either internal or external links. Uh, but there's a lot of confusion generally about like how do I start a, a new page um, and unlike a website where you create the sort of architecture and then go in and add content um, on the wiki it's sort of backwards you have to you you create a, a space but that space doesn't actually exist until you um, go in and, and add stuff to it so the way to create um, an internal link within the wiki is these double brackets. So um, I'm going to just this is this is the um, the title of our new page, and I've put um, the, the double brackets before and after. So with all of the wiki code, um, you need to sort of start your code off, and then you need to finish it. If you don't close it, you know, like you know, using parentheses, it's just that, that code will continue till it hits, you know, something else. So, um, and this won't exist until I hit save. Um, and again, this is a this is a big change. So I'm gonna put something into my summary. Um, so created a link for new getting started in your career. Now, um, before I hit save page, if I want to sort of see, um, it's not as relevant for this, but once when you're getting into just like sort of formatting the content and you just want to see how it looks, either you can sort of, um, before you actually save that change, you can go into show preview. Um, I actually like working in the show preview mode um, sometimes because you can sort of see what's going on um, and have your editing uh, mode, uh, editing window open. It doesn't work so well for this page because it is so long. So you see, I had to scroll all the way down to get back to my editing window when if really what I wanted was at the top of the page. So let's go back without trying to make you dizzy. So what you're seeing here is, so this is gonna be our, our um, this is the header that was already there. And this is the link to what's going to become this new page. So, okay, that doesn't look the way we want it, but um, we're actually going to save the page for now. Okay. So now we um, we save that, and we have this link again. It's red because there's nothing there at the moment. Um, so. It's also sort of like a little bit out of place. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back in. Now, um, here's an, another thing when you go into the edit mode. You can do that from the top of the page, which brings you into the, uh, a window with 
all of the content from that page. But as you see here, also there's um, edit in these other sections. If you're using headers, it will automatically allow you to break up like just a chunk of content. So it's a little bit more manageable. So I've created this page now. There's nothing there, so it doesn't really exist. But I don't actually want this link up here. So um, I'm going to go in and edit here. I'm actually going to move those brackets. Hmm. This is a good question. I have to see if you can actually do this. Whether you can actually have it as a header and a link. Let's find out. Okay, we did. So now we essentially have two links to the same page. Um, and let's go uh, put some content in here. Okay, so now we're creating this getting started in your career page. I'm gonna say, What are we content that we're going to cover? Um, these okay. So we now have a little bit of stuff that we're putting in here, and um, but if I just save this page now, or if I just hit show preview, what you're going to see is that. Um, Here's our editing window here. And um, all of this like got all sort of lumped together. Um, so that doesn't look like anything that we want on the page. Uh, and that's because we haven't sort of formatted that. The wiki doesn't recognize like a, a page return as, as, as formatting. So we have to go in and, and create some of the things. So let's talk now about um, what some of these uh, these um, formatting options are for you. Uh, when you go into an editing page, it may just look like this. And what we have here are a couple of like um, toolbars that, um, that give you um, sort of shortcuts for things. So this is already um, way better than our first um, earlier uh, versions of the wiki because um, a lot of the stuff is, is here um, using what they call the WYSIWYG uh, editor, the what you see is what you get um, editor. So, okay, I, want, I don't want this all coming up as one line. Uh, I want there to be um, a page break. So if I just hit that sort of enter, what looks like the enter key on your keyboard, it pumps in this um, little bit of code here. Uh, and so that code can either go at the end of the line or it can go on its own line. Um, but once I do that and I hit again, show preview, you're gonna see, ah, all of a sudden, okay, now all of this stuff is in the second line. So if I don't want all of these three things to come up as, um, as on the same line, I have a couple of options. Either I can, um, use the WYSIWYG or just cut and paste this piece of code everywhere. Or um, there's a couple of other things that um, insert their own code. So I could use either the bullet um, or the numbered list. And so this doesn't actually put in the numbering, this is just putting in the code. And um, so when I hit save, um, show preview, you'll see, um, We've got, this is what it would look like as a numbered list. Um, let's just replicate that. And we can, you know, can see this automatically adds the bulleted list code. And let's get our show preview here. Um, so by putting in these asterisks or these pound signs, you're getting of different kind of formatting and they automatically will include 
like a, a page break. Um, in this case, though, I don't think we actually want to use bullets or, pay, uh, or um, numbers because these are going to be um, actually headings for, for new pages. Um, and so we are going to instead use um, the internal formatting that is coded into our wiki for, um, for headings that you'll see here. So um, you'll see we have level two to level five. At the top, um, this, whatever your page title is, that's a level one heading. So that's automatic um, applied to any new page name. So you um, have, you work down, you know, work down from, from there. So I would say that these are going to be level two. Now I'm gonna, make a mistake here. And you're going to see that I had cut and pasted all three of these things. Um, and so it applied my code in the beginning and at the end. But when I hit preview, that's not going to look right because that's not all one, one header. Um, so that didn't come out right. We're getting something weird happening here. This just put in the code. That's not that's not working. So we're just gonna go in and sort of manually edit this. So again, you're adding the code before uh, and then closing it off afterwards. And now we're gonna hit show preview. Okay. So now just by applying this as um, heading two, that um, that automatically, you know, made it made it bigger. Um, if we did, um, let's see, choosing a specialty. Um, So I'm just coming up with something a little bit silly here for you to just sort of see what the difference is as you get into. Um, uh, so this does sort of make sense. Your level two header has two uh, equal signs before and after. Your level three has three, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So as you work your way down um, through your headers, and we're gonna show the preview so you can sort of see um, how, you know, how that looks. Now, the other thing that's great about using the headers and why I encourage you to do this is because um, once you do that, it will automatically format a, a table of contents for you on, um, on your page. Uh, you can hide that, um, so you don't have to have that code if it doesn't work for how you want your page to look, um, but it automatically sort of numbers and, and organizes it. And so when you are creating pages you don't want to put in your own numbering system using Roman numerals or even this kind of one, two, three, three point one. Let let use the formatting with the wiki and the template to do it itself. That's going to save you work because over time, um, if we change things on the wiki, anything that's formatted with the headings will automatically reformat if um, if we change the the look of the site or something like that. Um, is that clear about sort of using using headings? That sounds good. You guys doing still with me? Okay, uh, terrific. Okay, so in this case, um, these may be headings, but um, they also are going to be um, links to um, to future pages. Now, here's um, something that is that I want to focus on um, also is that um, one, I haven't saved this page yet. So if I navigate somewhere else, um, I will, uh, before I save the page, I will have lost all this. So I encourage you to save, keep the summary um, of your saves um, frequently 
uh, and do that frequently because there's nothing worse than spending like an hour on formatting a page exactly the way you want. And then you go in and think, oh, I'll just check that that link works and you've navigated away from this editing page and you've lost all your work. So I've been showing you the preview, but now I'm just gonna hit save page. Okay, so again, now we're booted out of our editing window, but we have this getting started in your career. Now, this is important again to know that once you set up this page name this you cannot go in and change um, so there's a couple of things that you can do we can you can set up a redirect from an old page name to a new page um, I, and we can delete pages and things like that but it just um you want to put some thought into you know what new page names are and um, that's the sort of the conversation that we we had prior to this but it's also relevant because when you link you must get your page title precisely correct which includes again just like your username getting capitals so here we have education and training now i happen to know um, because this is the change that we made prior that we had um, an education and training page already um, but it was actually education and ampersand. Um, so this, I'm just gonna go in and change um, so that we can use the same um, page since it already sort of exists, it's already out there in the ether. Um, okay, and so I'm just gonna say, Okay, uh-oh, well, the fact that it's coming up red shows that in fact, I didn't get it quite right. And I think that's because I'm missing a space here. Okay, so before when it was red, it's because um, I had an error in my page title, so it wasn't finding the link. So it's a, a sort of good um, demonstration of the fact that like when you set up a page and you want to link to it internally, the easiest thing to do is just sort of cut and paste from here just to make sure that you get it exactly right, all the um, spacing and capitals and you know, all of that. So um, we can now follow this link um, into our education and training page. Uh, there's no content there, but actually, um, there was, and this is where we will discuss our history page. So again, we have our content page, we have our discussion, um, if there is any, your editing mode that we'll come back to, and then um, your history page. So one of the things, everybody feels a little intimidated about putting something in the wiki, you're putting it out there, it's public, it's online, you know. Uh, and there's a fear of like, what if I screw it up? Uh, and so I want to assure you that in fact, it's really difficult to screw anything up um, on the wiki because, um, because of, of this uh, history function. So what you're seeing here is that every time you hit save page, um, it creates this log. Um, so you can see, and every time you put information into that summary field, um, it gives you this. So this is why that's useful to do because just on this page here, I can go in and sort of see what change that was. So that's why I say you don't have to put something in the summary if you're just changing, let's say from and to ampersand or you're correcting a typo. But um, here it's useful to know that, okay, this is when we added the education category um, to the page, the category tag to the page or um, where Carrie Roberts went in and added, you know, um, another link to a whole, you know, separate um, piece of content. So you can sort of see that at a glance, but then what you can also do is, so here is, um, you're also seeing that like, here's where um, characters were added and here's where I deleted all the, the content that was previously on this page as, as we reworked it. So what you can also do is you can compare and sort of see what, what happened here. Um, so let's say we wanna compare between um, what I had and what Carrie had. Um, 
and there we go. So we, you know, click on the bubbles, and then we say compare selected revisions. So this takes a, a little bit of a sort of getting your head around, but so this sort of shows you the page as it was at, at this date and time. And um, so this is uh, what it was at 12.02 on January 6th. And um, these are the things that were, were added. So as if we go back into our history, you know, you can play around and sort of seeing different versions of, um, of the page. So here's where, you know, a lot of sort of formatting was done, um, you know, a little bit of, of extra, of extra text. Um, and so if anything sort of catastrophic happens, you can see that there's an undo which essentially allows you to roll back a page to an earlier version. So let's say you go in and you know your cat walks across your keyboard and all of a sudden um, you wind up uh, with, um, you had all this content and then all of a sudden your page is blank like it is now, you know, um, and the cat hit saved for you. So, you know, don't worry because you can go in, oops, page, you can go in and undo back to a, a previous page. So this should make you feel comfortable that almost nothing is irrecoverable except for deleting a page. Um, I think as a creator, you do have the ability to delete a page. Um, that's something that if you are planning on doing, you might want to just check with me, <laughs> me or check with your ECPN leader, something like that. That's, that is an irreversible um, thing to do. Okay, so um, let's go back into our page and actually, um, let's go, let's see if we can back, maybe a, an inelegant way to get back to where we were. Um, okay, so. Now we are back in our new getting started in our career page. Now, why, this is sort of weird. Why do we have, we have getting started in your career, it's big, it's you know, our page name, and then we have this little thing. And I can't, when I, if I go into my edit mode, I don't even see that. Like, so why is that there twice? That seems confusing. So what that actually is, is the reason why you don't see it in your editing page is again, it's a bit of code that's part of the, the wiki architecture. Um, and that's part of um, what's like a, what we call breadcrumbs uh, on websites. So it helps you try and figure out what your navigation is. So let me show you another example of that. So here um, in your main resources page, um, you have your main catalog page, education training, and this is the page you're on. But it allows you to sort of um, work your way back. And so, in fact, you don't um, need to manually code that anymore, which you did at a certain point, which is probably why, you know, this is still here. So now this is um, sort of um, content that, that you don't need to, to worry about. So how do we, how do we get that? Um, let's go back. Um, so this is by adding a category tag. So let's go into our um, edit mode. Now a category is a new link and we're just gonna we're gonna put that sort of I'm gonna create some space and put it at the bottom. So a category is an internal link and we're gonna say that our new category is education and professional development. Okay. And we're going to save that. Okay. So now you'll see at the bottom, we um, added this, it's 
category and education professional development. There's, it's red because there's nothing in there yet. Um, but if we go into and click on categories, what you'll see is um, this takes us to all of the categories. You can click there through the link or at the bottom of um, at the bottom of all of the pages, you'll see this link to special pages. Um, I'm not going to click on it right now, um, but we'll come back to it uh, later, um, where there's a lot of content that's sort of useful to um, working on the wiki in special pages. But um, just like with everything, blue means there's content in there, red means there isn't. Um, so we actually had uh, education tag before, but now we're going to call this education and professional development. Once you include um, a category on multiple pages, it's going to create that breadcrumb and nesting for you. So this is going to be really important because it's going to start linking all of the content that you're doing on education and professional development for ECPN um, together. And you can have multiple categories on one page. So you could create um, uh, emerging conservation professionals um, category also. And But here's what we're seeing is sort of a, a funny issue. We have emerging conservators, emerging conservation professionals. Um, so I'd say at some point you guys will want to decide one you know, sort of category. Um, so whether it's ECPN or Emerging Conservation Professional Network or, um, you know, one of these that exists and remain consistent um, because what that is going to allow you to do is, let's find um, a page. That's a good example of a category page. Um, so this is an example of a category that just has like a little bit of, of content in here. Again, you're seeing we're in a sort of a different section of the wiki. Instead of saying page, it says category. Um, and what that does is it links together everything with that tag automatically. Um, so it's a, sort of an, a nice way of, of um, automating uh, some of the, the stuff that um, we'll want you, you know, that you guys will all be bringing together. Um, so I'm just going to go back to our, our page um, now. Um, and so let's actually go back to our main page. And we're going to jump in here and add that category. So we have this category education here. We may actually like just take that out and put in our new one. Or we can actually just modify this. Hmm. Okay. So now we're going to go here and we're going to. Go back into our editing mode here. All right, making you dizzy. We're going to scroll all the way down. And here we're going to add this. So again, we're using these double brackets for our internal links. It looks like you'll need to add category before the education. Um, well, let's see. We may have to. Go in. It may be reading that other category first. So. I've already blanked out on which which category we had there. Ooh. 
emerging conservatives. Okay, so um, now we've, you know, now we've have this uh, breadcrumb set up properly the, the way we want it. So whichever um, category comes first is the one that it sort of pulls from. So that's something for you guys to sort of discuss among yourself. Um, it, if you want it to be emerging conservators, if you want it to be ECPN, whatever it is, um, that's fine. You can have multiple ones for multiple tags, but for your main breadcrumbs, you're going to want to sort of decide like what is your the primary path um, that you want it to you know want it to be? Um, does that make sense in terms of um, how you use the breadcrumbs and how you'll um, put in these these category tags? Sounds good. Okay, so let's just. Um, pop back into um, our editing uh, window and do a little bit more editing on our, um, on our page. So, um, so in this case, what you, what you saw is education and training. We change it from and. So what we may want to do is just uh, remain consistent here. And let's just do this one more time. So instead, we're going to say internship and Okay, so now we've set this up as a header and a link to um, a future page where you may, you know, want to move over some, some content. And, you know, just in the interest of time, I'm not going to put in my summary, but, you know, I'm going to hit page. And, and um, so we've got now a couple of links to, to new pages. So let's just check. Let's see, what do we have here? Um, okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, since this content already exists, I'm just going to, um, I don't need to reinvent the wheel, I can just uh, copy that, and we're going up. Oh. But I'm not logged in. Ah, but it doesn't matter because I can go in. Even if you're not logged in, you can view the source. So that's you know your source coding. Um, and so somebody who's not logged in, I can't go in. I'm typing, typing. I can't actually change anything here, but I can actually see it. So let's see. We're going to want to. Was I looking for? I think we've already gone past it. Internships and fellowships. So this is um, the content that I want to grab for our new internships and fellowships page. And um, to say okay let's just quickly see if this yep we're in our preview so again this may not look the way we want it to, but we just pretty much captured the, the stuff that was already there. So let's hit save page, and then we're going to go back in to edit this to play around with it a little bit more. Um, so rather than having this be bullet points, maybe we're going to make this now our level you know, two header. Um, and what you're seeing here. Um, with the colon, this is a way of doing an indent 
um, without a, a bullet. So let me just show you. So you see that it sort of indented it under the, um, the bullet. And then, you know, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, you know, with let's just So if, um, if I've got my content already, you can just highlight and paste, uh, sorry, highlight and click. Um, um, or if once you get really you know, good at this and you're, you're um, working away and you know that let's say italics is two, uh, quote, two um, apostrophes before and after and bold is, you can, you can manually enter it or you can um, use or um, use the, the WYSIWYG editor. You can also sort of put the content in and then um, after putting in the code. So, um, okay. So next, let's say um, we want to, this is tips for finding internship fellowships and jobs. Um, Let's say here, one of the things that we want to add is um, a link to the AIC blog, which is, um, is not on our wiki site, but that's where a lot of the job postings are now. And so that's going to be an external link. Um, so either um, what you're seeing down here is um, these are external links because they have the one bracket as opposed to the two brackets for the internal link. Um, and there's a few different um, things that you'll see when we use the, um, the, the brackets. Uh, and you can either just put in the code yourself or you can also use our WYSIWYG. Um, so here it's showing you already, you are, can point to a, a wiki page or to an external web page and that's gonna you know, do it automatically for which brackets. So here, it's going to put in this little code automatically that shows that it's an external link. And let's see if I remember the name of our own blog. And um, we're going to then insert link. Where did I do that? I had my cursor and put it in here. Okay, so let's see if I got that right. Okay, so we did get it right because um, it's a blue link and if it was going to some place where it's not finding anything, it's gonna be uh, a red link. Um, now, remember, I'm in preview mode, so I don't want to click on this to check that I got it right in, um, before saving um, my page. And so now that we've saved it, we can check. Um, oh, I didn't get that right. So, okay. Ah, I'm missing the, the dash. So it was taking us somewhere, but it wasn't where we wanted to go. So let's go back in and correct that. And now I can just remove this and replace it with that. Okay, now by doing what I did here, I changed um, what that link was doing. So um, what I have here is, um, is just this one as opposed to having the full name or or what you're seeing down here as the alias. So let's show you the difference between that. So here we just have um, have the the link in the bracket. If we if we use again our um, WYSIWYG editor and we do this, it's going to not going to do that correctly. Oh. Uh, that's just going to put the, the code in. And here, if we do this, Okay, 
that up, right? Again, uh, helpful that it reminded me I hadn't saved. So we want, let's put in a page break just to make it a little clearer what's going on here. Ooh. Huh. I have no idea what I just did there. <laughs> well, okay. I seem to have justified everything to the right. I don't know how I did that. So that's a good lesson. In this case, what we're just going to do is we're going to cancel that. I'm going to say leave page. Okay. So that threw me back to the you know the previous the, the latest uh, saved version that I had there. <laughs> so um, okay, let's go back into our edit mode. Um, we want to do. I want to show you these different ways of doing the link. Okay, so here we're inserting, here when we did it, I just put in the link and this was blank. Here we're doing it and we're, the text to display is going to be the, um, the actual URL. Again, I'm just putting in these page breaks so it's a little bit easier to see what we're doing. And now we're going to do this again, and we're going to say we want the text to display the AIC blog. Okay, so here it added the bracket, and after the website, there's um, the URL, there's a space, and then sort of what your alias is. So let's go into our show preview now. Um, so here you're seeing three different ways, all using a link to an external site. So this one sort of comes up as if um, it's like a, a footnote. Uh, this one gives you the URL where you see the full URL, and this gives you a live link, um, but as, a, as an alias. Um, so I'm going to hit save. So does that make sense that, you know, there are different ways, and this is true of both internal and external links, that um, you generally on an internal link, whatever is in the bracket is what you see, but you can actually set up an, an alias for that as well. So let me, it's slightly different though, so let's just go in and sort of show you how you do that. So let's say we want to link back to, um, our resources for emerging conservators page just because that's easy for us to grab. So let's do um, here, and we want this to say um, so. This is an internal link, and we're gonna put that there. So here. Um, the alias in an external link is the space between the URL and the alias. And here you separate it with this upright bar, which um, at least on my keyboard is over the slash. Um, and if we don't do that, if we just do um, our double bracket, you'll see um, that you just lined up with that page name. Okay, so again, I didn't put in the page breaks, but you're seeing that there's two different um, links here. Okay, so how are you guys feeling about internal versus external links and different ways of formatting links? That's good? Got it. Yep, good. Um, so just a, a few more things that I'm um, that I'll mention here, and then you know you guys are savvy about this stuff, and um, it, you know I'm, I don't think I, we have to walk through all of it. Um, there is there are times when you may want to explain how uh, um, like you may want to use a 
a template for a page and, and give instruction like in the discussion. And so you want to tell people how to do the coding without it actually doing the thing. Um, so here, I'll give you a, a quick example of that. Um, bear with me for a second. Um, on the lexicon, um, we wanted to sort of show people how to um, create this citation and reference format and create an, an entry. So um, we wanted people to see what the code is. We didn't want it to actually do that. Um, and so if you want to do, do, do that, explain it to that, then you would want to use this um, no wiki formatting. So that knows that like you're just putting that code in there to sort of show or explain, but it's not actually going to, to create what, what it is that you're saying there. So that's sort of a, it allows you to, um, to sort of n n not have that functionality attached. Um, these kinds of things are, are um, superscript, you know, subscript, um, I would stay away from big and little and just use your headers because this um, can become sort of uh, confusing. Um, but you guys can play around with some of these things. Um, one of the things that I do want to sort of show is um, this, which is the signature and timestamp. So this is particularly useful not for your page content, but for your discussion content. So. Um, Save our page here and let's say go into our discussion page. Okay. Okay, so I want to leave a message for Rebecca maybe on where I got to in editing. Um, and if I'm logged in as me and I hit this, it's just going to put in this code. But when I hit save, um, it's going to automatically um, put in my username and the date and time that that happened. So, um, so this is great for the discussion page for sort of keeping track of you know who's doing what or when when stuff happened um, automatically. You could you know type in your type in your name, but this um, this is designed to do you know exactly that. Um, okay. So let's go back here, um, back into our editing mode. So um, advanced special characters is, you know, sort of um, self-explanatory, um, the kinds of things um, that you might need. And um, help is a, just a different way to access some of um, some of these other features. I'm not going to spend a lot of time um, to to talk about references. There's a bunch of different ways to do citations. And um, what I may do is I'll set up like a tip page with links to a, a couple of different places across the wiki that show examples of, of how you can do those citations where it does, let's say, an anchor link um, where, you know, we'll jump down to like essentially like a, an end, um, you know, a, a footnote or like, you know, an end note. Um, or an in-text citation that will jump down to the full citation um, at the bottom. So there's different ways to do that and, and you can explore that. The one thing I want to cover, because I'm mindful that, um, that I've been uh, talking for a while, is um, to look at, and so here this is another under help, um, and you also have the, the little icon here for reference, um, is I want to talk about um, uploading files and um, what you can do with, with those. So um, one of the things that you're seeing here, which is uh, really great, is um, the windows that pull in the, uh, a YouTube video screen and make it um, easy to access. They make the pages look um, interesting and fun, you know, rather than just linking to it. Um, it you know, it's really clear that there's you know, something probably more interesting than reading. Everybody says millennials would rather watch a video than read something. So um, there you go. So this is the code. We have this widget that um, that 
you know, creates that, that code for you. And what you would need to do is um, go, to, go to the YouTube video and find what that ID number is. So again, this is just like a little bit of code that um, if you're doing this in a new page, you can just sort of copy and paste this into your new page and then just figure out how to replace the, the one little bit that, um, that you need to link to the, the new video. Um, you actually, um, pro you know, probably, it's probably this whole thing that you need. And then, um, this is just a, a little bit that gets replaced. So, um, so that's how the, the video um, windows are. But let's look at uploading um, a, a file, such as a PDF or um, an image. And Rebecca sent me a couple of things. Um, and so there's two ways to do this. You can um, do it from the WYSIWYG um, editor, and you can do it from the link down at the bottom of the page, which is upload file. So um, let's, for this time, let's just go in here. When you go to upload file, um, what you're basically going to be doing, and this is similar if you've worked on WordPress, where you have like a central um, media library, and then um, within a post or a, a web page on your WordPress site, you're linking to that um, piece of content in your library. So it's the same thing here. The wiki has a, a central um, library, uh, and it shows you, um, these are the permitted file types, um, and the maximum file size is 100 megabytes. We ask that you keep you know, your um, file size as small as possible, because we have hundreds of pages of content on the wiki, and it, it does add up over time. PDFs shouldn't be an, an issue, but you know, for, um, uh, for an image file, you don't need, you know, the 8 by 10, 300, you know, pixels. You can um, ideally resize something to be appropriate before, um, before you upload it um, onto the, the wiki. Um, when I'm working and I know I'm going to be adding um, uh, other image files or something, I'll sometimes keep a, a Word document cheat sheet with some of this because it's nice. Um, once you've uploaded it, you navigate away from this page, and it's nice to have this is the code that's going to let you go in and put a file in in different ways um, uh, on your page. So again, it's a two-step process to link to content, whether it's a PDF or an image. You're going to load it into the central um, media library, and then it's going to give you the file name that you know um, becomes the title that you're going to link to just the way we do with other internal links. So let's go, let's, we're gonna browse to the desktop and we have um, this image. And um, so it's got this whole uh, long file name, which is the destination file name. We could change that if we wanted, but we're gonna say, um, uh, Image. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull our caption information, but we can pull in um, Um, for licensing, we don't have any of that stuff in there. Now, whenever um, you load something, it's going to assume that you're interested in that piece of content, and we'll come back to the, the watch, and if I don't, um, remind me, and we're going to say um, upload. Okay. So now what you're seeing, just like before, we had category, colon, user, colon, um, talk, colon. Now this is a different piece of content. It's called um, file, colon. So this is um, indicating that this is our file. And now the only reason to keep your file name <laughs> simple is that if we want to link to this image, we need all of this, which is fine. But as you see down here, this puts in the information that I put in that summary. 
And then you have a file history, um, as well as all the metadata, it automatically all gets loaded. Once we link this file to a page, um, it will come up here. And so if you go into the media library, you can see every place where a particular image or file is used uh, across the site. So if we want to put this into our um, new um, page, we're going to you know, copy and paste this. And then I'm just going to hit back a couple of times. This will get us back where we want it to be on our internship and fellowship page. So I can't just plunk that file name in, though. I need to you know, link to it as um, an internal link. But there's different ways to, to do that. So I'm just going to paste it in here and then um, sort of I can actually paste in. OK. Oops. So what you're seeing here is this is just sort of a, a demo for files and then your, your file name. So our file name, again, is, is this. And we just don't want to keep our code hanging out there. So we're going to show you that as one version. This is our second version of this. And then this is our third version. And we need to get that file. Okay, so we've got a, a few different things going on here. So what you'll see here, this is just going to plunk in the, the image. Um, but maybe we want that image to be a little bit smaller. Maybe we want it to have a caption. Um, maybe we want it on the left or on the right. Um, and so here is where we can put that um, caption information in our um, text. Okay. So, and this is, I forgot to put any coding around there. Now this has a different um, prefix. This is a media prefix instead of a file prefix. So let's see what these different things look like. OK. Well, so that's our original file. Woo, that's big. So maybe, um, and so what you're getting is you're getting, it's like pulling that whole file page. Um, so that is not what we wanted. OK. So oh, in here, this this one didn't work because I didn't actually replace the placeholder content with our real content. OK, so we have our original full-size image. Now, this is now, now we're talking. This is looking a, a little bit better. Um, this is our second one. And um, this is our third and fourth one here. So this is um, what did what did I get wrong here? Something that's not turning up. Ah, I've lost my bracket here, and this we can get back. Okay, full size image, smaller resized image. Now this shows you, um, this will take you to that page. So you're just getting the link to that media page. And there are times when you, you know, might want to link to the, that media without actually, you know, showing it if it's a different kind of file. And here I forgot to put my brackets around. So it's just showing that, but it doesn't actually take me anywhere. So let's delete. Um, let's, oops, sorry. 
let's delete this. And we're going to delete that full size because um, that's not going to be really useful. Um, and then we're just going to play around that 200 pixel was maybe um, a little small and maybe instead we don't we want it on the right and you know it's sort of obvious that it's a caption so we can um, get rid of that so let's see what that looks like now okay so that's starting to look a little bit better we're going to resist the temptation to click on this until I have saved and so added image Hmm. Okay, so that looks like something maybe approximating, you know, what you might want to see on a page. And if we actually click on it, it's going to take you to that full um, file page for that. And again, now we see since we saved it, it's um, it's going to take it's going to show us, you know, that it's um, being used on that that page. Um, so as you work your way around the, the wiki, you'll see there's lots of different ways, you know, you can um, take out the, the, the caption um, text if you just want the image in and it doesn't need a photo credit or caption. You can play around with the size and spacing um, and, you know, different things to, to change the, the look. So one other thing, um, so let's just do the, the same now. Let's go back. So we did it before from the upload file. Now we'll do it um, here from the um, embed file. Ah, so this we don't want to do now because we actually haven't um, we haven't uploaded our new file into the image library. But this, if you have it um, uploaded and let's say you um, paste in into your cheat sheet the the file name, you can just plunk it in here in your caption, and this will sort of, without remembering the code again, it's just a, a, a shortcut. It allows you to figure out, you know, what you want your uh, alignment, um, you know, to be if you want, you know, these are some of the other options for, for how the image um, appears. Okay, so we're not going to do that. We're going to go back to our upload file, and we're going to upload the second um, file that we have, which is um, the AIC News. Um, so, um, and we're going to upload this. Okay, so now we have a a PDF. This is again our file name. Um, let's sort of go back um, to where we are. So this might be um, an example of where we want to use um, an alias. We're going to put this in and then say. Um, got that right. Where did it go? Okay. I didn't put in a page break. Let's just clean that up so it's a little bit. Um, a little bit easier on the eye. Okay, so by doing this, now we've just linked to, um, to that piece in the media, but um, that's not the way I want it to look. I want it to um, have that, sorry. Um, 
So, hmm, I'm not sure that I remember how to do this. So let's go and find, um, let's go find a place where it looks the way I want it to. Uh, now I remember, ah, here, we have a couple of other PDFs already on the page. So let's go into our source here and figure out how they did that. So here they have that media. Ah, so they were using the, the media, not file. Uh, and then that allows you to have the, the alias. Now they also have the groovy little PDF logo that I know is already in there. So I don't need to like go into the media library to find it. I can just, you know, I can just take all of this back to my page, paste that in, and take my file name and replace it here. Oh, we don't want it to be a file and a media. Okay, so let's see if we got that right. Okay, um, well, we did something wrong because it is giving me a red link. What did I get wrong here? Hmm. So we have our Groovy PDF logo, and this actually has a little bit of a of code here. This link minus means that like if you if you click on the there's nothing to click on here. It's just a, a little signifier. Um, but this isn't right because we um, it should be linking to our content. So somehow we got one of the names wrong. So let's go let's go back. Here's where we're going to use our special pages. So again, whether you're logged in or not, um, you get the special pages at the um, bottom of every wiki page. And so this is great to know about because um, once you get your username and login, I should have said this at the top, uh, then um, you will want to reset your password to something that you will be able to remember. If in the future you need to change the email address that's linked with your account, all of that comes in with this um, sort of in this users and rights. Um, if you want to check uh, statistics and other things, you can um, find some of that uh, in here. Um, if you want to figure out what categories are already used or exist, um, that's a really important thing that you should be doing that here. Um, un, uncategorized, you know, there's a bunch of other um, ways to find, you know, categories that have um, not been used or are being used. So what you see on the special pages will differ a little bit, um, you know, from right now, um, I'm not logged in. So you'll have, you know, a few other things that you, you know, will see. Um, but we can also get to our file list here of all of our media files. So we can search for media name, or we can see that, oh, I just, um, this gives us our, our link of things. So here, let's see, what did I get wrong with that? Um, Okay, so that worked because now we have our um, our link. Although my alias is wrong, we want that to be um, we want this to be. Okay, so now um, we can, you know, have a read the lead article. We probably don't need the quotations. We have our little groovy PDF. 
if I hit um, save page, and this, if I click on this, that will take me to the PDF of that. Um, and that's the difference between the media extension and the file extension. If I had had file in there, it would have taken me to the file page in our media library, not to the actual document itself. So is that um, helpful in trying to figure out, you know, sort of the difference between a media extension, a file extension, and all of these different things that you can do to play around with things that you've loaded into the central image library? Yes. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so I realize um, we've taken up more time than, um, than I had um, warned you about. But let me just uh, tell you a couple of last uh, things before I unleash you. Um, we're not going to, to over delete and without <laughs> really um, making sure, maybe you know, speaking to Rebecca or, or to me. But one thing that you can do, um, if you have created a page, uh, it's going to assume that you're sort of interested in that. But you can, um, and you can protect the page. So I, I'm not sure actually if you guys can um, can do this, uh, which means that other people cannot edit that. That's probably not what you want to do. But what you can do is you can add things to what's called your watch list. So if you edit a page, it assumes that you're interested in that. It's going to automatically add it to your watch list. And then if somebody else goes in to edit it, so, you know, for instance, anything that's on your watch list, Rebecca, across ECPN, if anybody else goes in and they make a change, you will get an email notification to the email that's associated with your username um, that, you know, somebody, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, M. Hayes has gone in and um, edited that page and you can click on a link directly from that email that will take you into the special page and show you basically, um, you know, the, the history here. So um, if you see the, 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 this is the watch list of just, you know, sort of the recent, this is just the, the last, you know, few things um, that, um, that you can, so I have like 236 pages on my watch list, which I probably should, should clean up um, at some point, but it's, um, it's nice if you're trying to keep track of, uh, of an area of content. It's an it's a automated way of doing that. Um, when you're back in, um, in that, again, if you don't want to, you can click unwatch, and so that's going to remove that um, from your watch list. Um, another quick thing, you know, just to, you have um, your preferences up here, uh, which, again, tells you sort of um, what your email uh, is linked to, all of these things um, that are sort of, you know, about uh, you and, and your login, you can access those things from, from your special, um, special pages as well. So, um, with the last few minutes, let's just go back to, um, have to change this in the, the menu. So that's going to, uh, um, this, this I'll have to come back to guys and, and change so that it navigates, um, so that we change, I changed it here, but I'm gonna have to change it in the menu. Um, so basically what I would say, you know, you can, you can discuss this amongst yourselves, but I might give, you know, Rebecca some time to, um, from this, from this new, um, from this sort of resources from emerging conservators, uh, create the different um, links to these new pages, or you know, or you guys can do that on on your own. Let's um, remove this um, additional link that we don't need um, here. Um, but. You should now know how to create a new page using an internal link. Um, and once you um, get to that new page, um, you know, either by pasting in uh, or 
um, you know, writing directly, start um, editing, uh, know how to use your discussion page to uh, leave information for your colleagues who are going to be working on that or, you know, who will come after you. And um, if something goes horribly wrong, uh, how to roll back uh, using um, using your your history. So um, there's a couple other things that I'll um, touch base with Rebecca in terms of the, the categories. But any page that that you set up should have the um, the couple of important categories, and um, Rebecca will have you know be the final word on you know what those will be, whether it's um, emerging conservators, <laughs> emerging conservators, you know network, UCPN. Um, and then as well as this education and professional development, because um, that's going to then set up the, the, the appropriate um, sort of navigation breadcrumbs for you, as well as creating um, the category pages that will um, link all of your content together and um, allow you to sort of automate some of that function. Is there anything that you guys can think of that you know you want to do that I haven't covered. Again, this is really just the the intro, and by you know cutting and pasting and surfing around the the site, there's going to be a lot of other stuff that you can figure out how to do, you know, that I haven't you know haven't covered. Um, this isn't actually a how-to question, but in terms of getting logins, do we have to do something to request it, or are they coming our way, or how does that work? <laughs> Yeah, so I will um, make sure that um, that I get the list from Rebecca of um, everyone that she wants to, to authorize um, to uh, to do this, uh, to you know, to edit. So I will set that up, and you should, you know, if not tonight by um, by the end of tomorrow, you should have that. If you don't see it, um, you know, send me a message, but check your junk mail folder first because you know it comes from the server. It, it might get shunted in there as spam. I'll also be adding you to the um, AI, we have a um, AIC Wiki listserv. Um, and so that's where um, you can ask questions that, you know, there are other users who um, know as much, if not more, than I do about Wiki coding. Um, and, you know, when you upload new content or make changes, you should let people know on, the, on that list as well as any other specialty group list because, you know, it's just because you add content and it's live out there on the web, if people don't know it exists, you know, they won't. So once the content is the way you want it, you know, um, you'll want to send the message to our SD listeners, put it on your Facebook group, you know, write a blog post, <laughs> whatever, whatever it is to, to get the, the word out. So you will have, um, you should be getting uh, the information from the list and from the wiki with your login information. And again, remember, um, if you want to go in and change that information, you know, because it's going to be a, a an obnoxious um, password that you know you'll never remember, uh, you'll want to do that in um, the uh, the special pages before you get started. Got it. And, Thank you. Um, when you do that, um, again, remember to go in and try and add some, uh, just you know, even a sentence or just you know, test some things out uh, in your user page. So one last thing I just want to show you, I'm sorry, I keep saying you're going to have time for questions and I keep coming up with other things, is in the search. Um, the search function is really powerful um, on this. So, um, and when you do something, let's say you do a search here, what you'll see is it gives you everything that has matches the title, but as well as every time that comes up in the actual text of something. but it may not, this is just looking at content pages. Again, that the, the page, you know. Um, if you wanted to find everything where that comes in, let's say, um, then you'd want to go into an advanced search. And here's where you see all of these other um, prefixes. You know, we talked about user colon, talk colon, file colon. Um, so if you want to be able to search, let's say, I know I uploaded an ECPN image. I don't want to find it in the content. I want to find it, you know, any ECPN um, specific images, um, and you can, you know, play around. And so those are, um, you know, the various PDFs or things that have been loaded in specifically by ECPN. Um, okay. Anything else? 
<laughs> People are falling over, you know. Um, right now, this is Rebecca. Um, this is just for um, Marina, uh, Riley, and Alyssa, and anyone else who's going to end up listening to this recording. Um, Kari, our vice chair, and I will be taking care of all these major structural changes. So we would like the officers and liaisons just to focus on content, and um, hopefully it'll be clear where to slot it in um, once we make these changes to all the different pages. Um, so don't, don't worry about that. We will take care of it. Um, just keep pushing forward on the areas that you are um, signed up to develop for. Thank you, Sounds Rebecca. Great. I um, encourage you, you know, Rebecca and Kari um, are um, already uh, good at this and, you know, if, or, you know, Rebecca you know, will soon be good at this, but if there's any questions you know, you can also ask me directly and, and CC them. Um, you know, you can ask the, the listserv. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm here to, to be a resource to help you guys um, promote the amazing stuff that, um, that you're doing and make it easily um, findable for, for everyone else. So I'm grateful that you guys are um, going to be adding content. That's what makes the site um, useful and um, exciting. And I thank you all for, for listening and for those who will follow you listening to this recording. Um, thank you again for making the AIC Wiki great. Thanks, Rachel. Thank yes, you. Thanks so much, Rachel.